Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh, your incredibly handsome uh, science teacher guy. And in this video, we are going to be talking about the plant kingdom. size humans. Uh, so we're going to be talking in this video about the plant kingdom. In other videos, we have talked about how all living things are classified or organized into uh, kingdoms based on how they're alike and how they're different from each other. We've talked about the animal kingdom and other kingdoms in other videos. So this video we're specifically a specificamente we are talking only about the uh, plant kingdom. So plants, what are they, pray tell? Uh, you know what plants are, okay? You can easily identify something. If I take a plant and I throw it at you because I'm nice, I'm like, bam, hit you in the face of the plant. Uh, you, you'll know after you recover that that was a plant that I smacked you in the face with. Even if it's a plant you've never seen before, even if it's new to you, you're still going to know it's a plant because there are traits that you will recognize that are very uh, distinct and very clearly plant-like. What are those traits? Uh, how would you recognize a plant? If I said to you, uh, you know, is this a plant? And how would you know that it was a plant versus an animal? Okay. Plants, they have uh, predictable features like they have leaves typically and stems and roots and uh, they are they don't move and they don't generally speaking uh, and there are some you know exceptions a little bit here and there like sunflowers slowly move to follow the sun uh, and obviously Venus fly traps uh, close their uh, traps but they don't really move they don't walk around okay they stay where they are in one place uh, they are green because they are autotrophs. They are producers. So those are the characteristics of a plant that you are familiar with. Let's talk about how plants are subdivided or subclassified. Because underneath kingdom, we have phylum and classes, right? All of these uh, subgroups. Well, how do we divide plants uh, it, how do we organize them underneath the plant kingdom? The first thing that we look at is whether or not a plant is uh, vascular or non-vascular. And you know how scientists are. They like to impress girls by coming up with big sciencey words that sound impressive and smart. Okay, vascular and non-vascular. It just means, basically vascular means that they have tubes, okay, or not. Uh, vascular plants are more organized, they're more evolved, and more uh, structured. Non-vascular plants, which we're, we're going to start with, are much more basic. They're uh, barely evolved plants, let's just say that. Okay, examples of non-vascular plants are things like moss, and liverworts, and hornworts. Okay, these are very simple plants. They don't really have uh, a lot of structure to them. Uh, they don't have, you know, highly organized uh, bodies, which, which means they can't grow very big. That's why mosses are very small and just grow over the surface of something. Okay. Uh, so non-vascular plants are very basic, have very basic structures. Whereas vascular plants are much more highly evolved. Vascular plants have uh, all of the things that when you imagine a plant that we talked about a second ago, like uh, roots and leaves and stems. And inside of a vascular plant, inside all the parts of a vascular plant, uh, from the leaves all the way down to the roots, 
there are these little pipes, which is, uh, or these little tubes, which is where the term vascular comes from. Uh, that material, water and uh, food, flow through. And there are two kinds of pipes or tubes. Uh, one of those is called xylem, and the other is called phloem. Okay. Uh, and again, remember, scientists, right? They like to impress people. Uh, so xylem are the special kind of little pipes or tubes that carry water. And phloem is the little kind of tube that carries food. But how are you going to remember which is which? Just remember, although it's spelled with a PH instead of an F, but remember phloem starts with an F sound and food starts with an F and that's how you can remember. Okay, if, uh, phloem is for food and xylem is what's left. It's for uh, transporting water around the plant. Okay. And there are a lot of kinds of vascular plants. Most things that we think of as plants are vascular plants from grass to sunflowers to flowers, other flowers to trees. All of these things are vascular plants. And so we tend to uh, categorize them further, uh, the vascular plants, because there's so many of them. We subcategorize them based on the type of uh, how they reproduce based on the type of reproduction that they do. Okay, Most plants reproduce with seeds, but not all plants. There are some plants like ferns that actually reproduce using spores. These little tiny microscopic uh, spores and a fern will actually produce tens of thousands of these little uh, spores and then they'll burst out and kind of a little explosion and spores will go everywhere. And wherever the spores land, some of them will grow and become uh, new ferns. So not all plants use seeds. There are seedless plants and uh, like ferns that use spores. Okay. So we can divide plants based on are they, do they have seeds or spores. Now, the plants that have seeds, which again is most of the plants we're familiar with still, we can divide them based on whether they are gymnosperms or angiosperms. Okay, gymnosperms use uh, cones like uh, conifers, like pine trees. Angiosperms uh, produce their seeds in flowers like any pretty much any kind of uh, flowering plant that you can think of. So uh, we go from vascular, non-vascular and vascular, and then underneath vascular plants, we divide them between whether they are spores or seeds. And then once we get to seeds, we divide them based on whether they are gymnosperms, which are pine co which are cones, or whether they are... Uh, angiosperms, which are flowers, okay? In the case of both gymnosperms and angiosperms, there are male and female parts. There are male and female cones. Some cones, some trees are male and some are female. Some trees have both male and female and some have only one or the other. Okay, same goes with flowers. There are male and female parts of flowers, and uh, some flowers have both male and female parts. Some flowers are only male, and some are only female. Uh, when the flowers are reproducing, then the male parts of the flower produce what is called pollen, and the pollen is brought to the female parts of the flower this is why we call it the birds and the bees, by the way, guys. Okay. The female parts of the flower is brought to the, uh, or the male parts of the flower. The pollen is brought to the female parts of the flower by bees, typically, uh, or birds, like uh, uh, hummingbirds, carry the pollen around from the male parts of the flower to the female parts of the flower. So that, dear children our plants and how plants work.
Hi guys, thanks for watching my video. These rambling science videos where I go unscripted and just kind of barf up all the science knowledge out of my head are part of a series that go along with an online class that I teach, which you can sign up for if you go to handsomescienceteacher.com. I also have a whole bunch of free resources for homeschoolers. I have uh, hundreds of articles on every topic that uh, covers your entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade. I have online games and quizzes, all curated and written by uh, this handsome guy, uh, a science teacher with, well, three, three degrees, but two of them are in science. So it's uh, targeted right to and directly to your uh, your science students. So sign up, subscribe to the channel, and I release lots of videos. Also, in addition to these ones, lots of little uh, short videos that are like two minutes long that cover science topics. Those ones you don't get to see my handsome face, but they're still good videos and they're much more targeted. And those ones are scripted, so you don't have to hear me like you are right now going blah, blah, blah. The end. Uh, subscribe. Thank you. Goodbye.